Grace and peace to you in Christ's name. Welcome to the Ash Wednesday service for Hillsborough Presbyterian Church and New Hope Presbyterian Church. We are glad you are worshiping with us online. The bulletin is on the New Hope Presbyterian Church website and also church members, this has been emailed to you. So we invite you to follow along. Let us begin with our call to worship. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart. Roll up your sleeves. Let down your guard. Come in from the storm. Make yourself at home. Pull up to the table. Release the tension in your jaw. Take a deep breath. Return to God with all your heart. May it be so. Let us worship God together. Wednesday begins the season of Lent, a season in which we are invited to reflect, to turn, to focus. The prayer of confession in our worship service helps us with these purposes. In the prayer of confession, we are invited to clear the clutter of our minds and clear obstacles and burdens in our hearts. Let us pray together. Holy God, we confess, we don't return to you fully. We share with you the pieces of our lives that are convenient. We put on different hats in different rooms. We forget that we are called, invited, and loved with all that we are, including our mess, our beauty, our faith, and our doubt. Forgive us and give us hearts that long to return. Hear this assurance of pardon. 
Friends, God sees you. God hears you. God loves you. You are forgiven and claimed with all that you are. Rest in that good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the prophet Joel. It's chapter 2, verses 12 through 17. Let us pray. Loving Creator, we are here, telling stories of dust. We are here, trying to shake the dust out of our ears so that we might hear you clearly. We are here, hoping that showing up is the first step in returning to you. Scoop us up in your embrace and carry us to a place of truth. Clear the smog that makes it hard to see. Clear the dust that makes it hard to hear. We are at the edge of our seats. We are listening for you. Amen. The prophet says, Yet even now, says the Lord, Return to me with all your hearts, with fasting, with weeping, and with sorrow. Tear your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, very patient, full of faithful love, and ready to forgive. Who knows whether he will have a change of heart and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the horn in Zion, demand a fast, request a special assembly, Gather the people, prepare a holy meeting, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the groom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the Lord's ministers, weep. Let them say, have mercy, O Lord, on your people, and don't make your inheritance a disgrace, an example of failure among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Here ends the reading. Here the second scripture reading from the gospel according to Matthew. These are the words of Jesus. Be careful that you don't practice your religion in front of people to draw their attention. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Whenever you give to the poor, don't blow your trumpet as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may get praise from people. I assure you, that's the only reward they'll get. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that you may give to the poor in secret. Your father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners so that people will see them. I assure you, that's the only reward they'll get. But when you pray, go to your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is present in the secret place. Your Father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. And when you fast, don't put on a sad face like the hypocrites. They distort their faces so people will know they are fasting. I assure you that they have their reward. When you fast, brush your hair, wash your face. Then you won't look like you are fasting to people, but only to your Father who is present in that secret place. Your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Stop collecting treasures for your own benefit on earth, where moth and rust eat them and where thieves break in and steal them. Instead, collect treasures for yourself in heaven, where moth and rust don't eat them and where thieves don't break in and steal them. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I have to admit, I don't think about that teaching from Jesus 
that often, but when I hear it again, when I do think about it, it gives me pause. I've found myself asking lately, what is my treasure? What am I valuing and considering precious? What's worth holding on to? When I answer these questions, I realize, as Jesus says, that's where my heart is. That's where my loyalties are. That's where my hope and faith and love really lie. And as we begin this season that we call Lent, the 40 days of preparation and anticipation towards Easter, I want, us, I want to invite us all to ask the same questions. What are we treasuring? What are we valuing? What's worth holding on to? This is the time to take stock of those things. There are a lot of answers we all might have, most likely related to people, communities, places that have special meanings in our lives, like church. But I want to throw out one value that I hear both Jesus and the prophet Joel talking about in our scriptures today. Authenticity. Now, authenticity is kind of a churchy buzzword, but there is a good intention behind it. People go to church, or any community really, and they keep coming back to it because they find they can be fully themselves. They want to be in a community where other people are fully themselves too, where they are also authentic. This is a good thing. This is something that's good for us to seek to embody. In seeking a better relationship with God, we're called to value and treasure authenticity. I hear this when the prophet Joel says, Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your hearts, with fasting, with weeping, with sorrow. Tear your hearts, not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, very patient, full of faithful love, and ready to forgive. God invites us into greater intimacy, not through some false veil of piety or holiness, but exactly as we are, broken, flawed, unsure at times. In other words, authentically human. Which means we're also honest about our desire for joy and hope and peace and life. And so God offers those things back to us. God meets us with who God is, merciful, compassionate, patient, loving, and faithful. And I hear this sense of authenticity when Jesus essentially says, don't pray to put on a show. Don't engage in spiritual practices to make yourself look good in front of others. Do it because you want to be faithful to God. That's the only one who needs to see. It's not about appearances. It's not about performance. It's about being who God made you to be and loving God exactly for who God is. Be faithful. Engage in prayer and rituals, but don't parade it around like a mark of status. When we're authentic with our faith and who we are, faith becomes a way of life. Faith is not a special practice or performance we put on once or twice a year. It's something that happens always and in all moments. Being faithfully authentic allows us to reject the fake stuff, the synthetic, the convoluted, the manufactured, the pre-programmed. It frees us up to seek the real and authentic stuff of life, a.k.a. the stuff of God. And that's what Lent is about, right? Turning away from that which is, isn't ultimately important, perhaps harmful, and embracing the stuff of God. We realize in this season that is what we need to treasure and where our hearts are should be what God made them for. You might be thinking, what? This is Lent, right? This doesn't quite sound like Lent. Lent is about contemplating our mortality. Lent is about penance and confession and preparing ourselves for Easter. Well, you're right. Traditionally, it is. But what if this year, with everything we have going on, 
the past two years, today, now, with violence across the world, what if we thought about it a little differently? What if this recentering and recalibrating our focus back on God meant remembering and affirming who God made us to be? In the beginning, God made everything and called it very good. What if Lent this year was about realizing all that goodness and abundance of God that's all around us and embracing that? Embracing the real, not the fake. Embracing what's true, not false. Embracing the treasure that moth and rust cannot destroy. The treasure that will last and follow us into eternity. This is what the liturgical artists, sanctified art, have challenged congregations to do, and it's what I want to encourage all of us to do and consider. This is what they have to say about it. This different focus on Lent doesn't ignore or deny sin and suffering. It doesn't absolve accountability for wrongdoing. Instead, it contextualizes our faith. If love is our beginning, how can we live our lives led by love's promises? It reminds us to live fully as we pursue justice and hope or express grief and gratitude. And so this Lent, let us trust fully that we belong to God. Let us increase our capacity to receive and give grace. Let us discover the expansive life God dreams for us. So again, think about Lent as a practice of embracing the real, embracing the grace and life all around us, God-given and God-breathed. Over the next 40 days of the season, my encouragement to you is to spend time remembering this through prayer, through reflection, contemplation. Think about who you are and who God made you to be. And you know what? I also encourage you to share your Lenten journey with others. Talk about what it's looked like for you to chase the real and seek authenticity so that you all might be encouraged and inspired. But don't do it to make yourself look holy. Don't do it to check the box and say, okay, I've observed Lent this year. Do it because you mean it. Do it because you're tired of the false pretense. Do it because you want to embrace the real. Do it because you want to embrace God. This is what Jesus did, and it's what Jesus helps us to do as his followers. May it be so as we follow the path of our Lord and Savior together. Amen. invite you over the next 40 days of this season to embrace the real, 
discern some practices, some methods of contemplation and meditation for you to recenter yourselves on that, to recenter yourself on who God made you to be, who God is, and where God's glory is all around, and that we might all embrace that and, and be more in tune with where God wants us to be. And so what better way to practice that now tonight than to mark ourselves with ashes? Now, again, we're talking about something that's a little less traditional than our usual Lent, but what the dust reminds us is exactly who we are and where we belong. In one of our statements of faith in the Presbyterian Church, we say, in life and in death, we belong to God. And those are actually the words we're going to use to impose ashes on each other. It's the words we invite you to use wherever and however you impose ashes. Because what the dust reminds us is that we come from dust, we belong to God, and in death we return to God. We go back to dust. And that is authentically who we are. So we invite you to do that now as we impose ashes on each other. Carry in life and in death, you belong to God. Thanks be to God. Alex, in life and in death, you belong to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining us for this combined service with our two communities. It's always good when we could be together to celebrate who we are and to celebrate who God is. Now go into this season as we prepare for Holy Week and Easter. Go and embrace the real. Seek the authentic. Seek to be authentic. Authentically who God made you to be. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Amen.